I'm in northeastern India, in the Gir Wildlife Sanctuary, where lions live in harmony with our own species. Here man coexists peacefully with the great cats. Of course, something must be given in exchange for the continued equilibrium of the park. The Asiatic lion is different from the African lion. The Asiatic species is somewhat smaller and its mane is less impressive. In addition, its behavior toward humans is different. There are other differences besides their manes. Among the African lions, only females hunt, while male Asiatic lions must feed themselves. And what do they hunt? Mostly buffalo. The Maldaris bear no arms. At the most, they may carry a staff to pass peacefully among the lions with their livestock. Female lions don't usually attack domestic livestock. They hunt wild boars, cheetah deer and antelopes. Very rarely do they attack buffalo. The number of buffalo killed by males varies, depending on the population of wild herbivores. Killing a buffalo means more meat for the same amount of effort. People accept this, knowing that the lions have to eat if there is going to be peace. Men and lions may not be the best of friends in this unique place, but at least they're not enemies. I'm on my way. And this time, yes, I'm off to the African continent. Benin is between Nigeria and Togo. The Betamaribe are one of the most primitive peoples in West Africa, and they live in the northwestern part of the country. Also known as the Somba, which means nude, they live in two-story mud houses called tatas. When they want to build a tata, they prepare a large quantity of mud and place a branch on top of it. If the branch has not flown away by the next day, that means that the spirits approve. Not anybody can build a tata though, only certain specialists. The cast of Tata Builders is very prestigious, as are the casts of hunters and ironsmiths. The mud used to make Tatas is a mixture of different clays. This mixture contains no straw or other vegetable matter, and when it hardens, it's like a rock. It's cool and inviting inside the Tata. The small conical roofs are made of straw. Animal bones and ritual objects hang outside. The flat part of the roof is made of crisscrossed saplings plastered with mud. The ground floor has several teakwood columns, a round table in the middle, and a cooking area. 
Space in the tatas is utilized very well. Carving tools, cooking pots, and kitchen utensils are stored away in their own niches. And the dead are represented in a prominent corner. Animals live on the ground floor near the kitchen. This makes sense so they can't get up onto the flat roof. They're cared for by the women. The flat roof can be resurfaced when necessary. There's a marker up here that indicates the current stage of the agricultural cycle and when the harvest will come. Fonio is a cereal grain similar to rice that is the real wealth of the Betamaribe. As they say, a man without Fonio is to be pitied. 